previously on Top Photographer. We're stepping it up a notch today. You're going to be shooting a Pamela Rowland advertising campaign. Dude, I don't know anything about hair and makeup. It's going to dry super matte. I like that one. I'm keeping the objective of the client in mind. I know they want to show off the dress. You can kind of tell that it's a bit of an amateur shot. This is your last day on Top Photographer. You know, I was too concentrated on just making a pretty image. And the winning picture. Jemaya. Still not over. I haven't won at all, you know. We just won the battle. We got to win the war. So this morning, I woke up around 4 o'clock. Uh, we had a really early call time. Brushed my teeth, got ready, got downstairs. I was up bright and early. I knew we had to be loaded up in the van around 4.45. So. I honestly don't know. I, mean, I know we're shooting on location somewhere. I figured if we were going to be waking up so early, I was like, well, maybe they'll take us to the beach or something. Jamaya was like, oh, we're going to the beach. We're going to the beach. I'm like, we're going to the beach in New York. As soon as we got in the car, like my mind starts racing, like, what could this be? I saw we were driving into downtown, and I was like, OK. Empire? Nah. Good. What if we're shooting sunrise on top of the Empire State? Nah. I pass it all the time, never going up. I see it in movies, and I was like, one day I'm going to have to go over there. <laughs> Woo! As soon as we rolled up, I was like, pushing to get out of the car. I just wanted to go in. I can't explain the feeling of like walking into an empty Empire State Building and seeing Nigel stand there like smiling back at you. Good morning, photographers. Good morning, morning. Welcome to the Empire State Building. Did not expect we would end up at the Empire State Building. Oh man, my, my adrenaline started going. I was pumped. Today, you're going to be competing in a landscape photography competition. Oh, you're going to be shooting landscapes today. I was like, oh god. As awe-inspiring as the view is from the observation deck, it's obviously been photographed by literally millions of people. So the question is, how are you gonna stand out from the masses, and more importantly, from one another? In those bags in front of you is the new Canon 5D Mark IV, including a whole set of Canon L-series lenses, all courtesy of Canon. Are you ready to go up? Yes. Ready. Let's do it. I was pumped. I was Jack. We were shooting sunrise from the top of the Empire. We walked out on that floor and I was already set. I was like, OK, I'm going to shoot through here, or through this fence. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, when I said we're going to the top, I did indeed mean the top. Danny hits us with another surprise. We're going even higher than that. All the way to the top? Like, I freaked out in my mind. I'm like a little kid. I'm like, we get to go to the very top of the Empire State Building? We're going up to the private balcony. This private balcony that no one even knew existed up there. There are no fences. You're looking right over the edge. It just kept getting better. Jemaya, you won the fashion challenge yesterday. So I won the fashion challenge yesterday. They gave me five extra minutes to go out on the balcony by myself. You up for it? Let's do it. Wow. It was peaceful. You know, it was very meditative in a sense. You could just get lost up there and just do your work. This beautiful sunlight, colors are amazing. I started off at first, I wanted to get where the sun was rising from, but then I started walking around the area, then I saw the Freedom Tower, just an amazing design. So I wanted to capture that. I knew Jemaya was gonna get the first five minutes. The colors were nice in the sky, but the city was very dark. Um, I know that's going to be an issue, you know, pulling that back in Lightroom. Maybe you can do it, maybe you can't, but I wasn't worried. I wasn't really getting a lot of light on that side just yet because the sun's still coming up. It's maybe about, I don't know, this wide. Guardrails maybe around your waist high. It's not, it's not very high. You could easily fall off. I don't shoot landscape, but I know the feelings I get, like walking into the Empire State Building, and as soon as we got to the top, I wanted to make sure that whatever I was feeling, I was capturing through the lens. 
I was pumped, I was jacked, and I love shooting landscapes, so this was kind of right up my alley. I didn't want to get it overconfident, so I, you know, calmed myself, just focused on getting the shots that I needed, shots that I liked. There's not a lot of perspective that you can have as far as foreground. It's kind of just, there's the city, and capture it. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of tough to be unique in that sense. I know Scott is really good at landscapes. I've taken a look at his work. He's really good because he's a travel photographer. He shoots a lot of travel stuff. He's going all over the world, so he already has a trained eye for this kind of thing. I never underestimate Roxy or whatever, and I think that's a mistake some of the other contestants have made to this point. The shot I loved was actually by accident, and I realized that I was doing it. It was like a feeling, and I was like, this is gonna be it, so just nail this. We're going, we're kind of having to scramble by each other. <laughs> <laughs> Squish in, because it was such tight corners. I know, because you want to capture the light as it changes. Actually, once we got our shots, we actually started taking photos of each other. This is Roxy at work. You know, we're all friends at this point. Just kind of look out this way here. They're up there yeah. shooting, everyone's having a great time. It was just a really good moment being up there. I was having so much fun. I was just, I was like a kid in a candy shop. I'm, I'm so happy already. It's only 10 a.m., I'm good. Very blessed, always. <laughs> How are you doing? It is still ringing from the wind. Yes. I'd like to introduce our guest judge, Tom Jauncey, from Beautiful Destinations. The Jauncey brothers founded Beautiful Destinations, inspiring more than 12 million followers on Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, truly showing the world some of the most epic landscapes. I think what I'd love to see is really that epic moment. I think when you're doing fashion or when you're doing sports, you're getting into some of the details. With landscapers, what is that grand moment? You've got how many followers? Um, so 13 million followers on Instagram. Yeah, so I, I think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> All right, get to it. You've got half an hour. Go. I think I already know my image. It isn't a sun, a direct sunrise photo, which I think is taking a risk. The contestants have been surprising me at each challenge with their skill sets and you know what they can do. So I don't want to go in too confident. And 20 minutes left. Mostly when I when I do my edits, I'm looking at the composition first. I know if I got a good photo to start with then whatever I do in the, in the post process is just going to enhance that. I think one thing that we've always seen is how people react to colors. For example, with that, where there are the oranges and the blues, we found that the colors always is what captures people's attention. Mm. I'm not a landscape photographer, but I trust conveying emotion through my photographs. Is this your railing? Blurred in the bottom. I know, I like that. I liked it, actually, yeah. Yeah, a little yeah, fog. Cool. It's like yeah. the, the fog of New York. Absolutely, yeah. I, I actually thought of it a little differently, but I, I'll wait to tell the story. Okay. okay, I mean, you always have a story. I like it. She, she's, she's a good one for stories. Yeah. So you working in JPEG? Um, where am I? I'm in Ross. So, I mean, sorry, I'm in... Oh, yeah, no, that's not good. Opening Lightroom and seeing it was in JPEG and then trying to ignore it and then going back to the folder and seeing that all of them were in JPEG and then realizing slowly that I had not checked my camera before going out to shoot. So let me figure this out. Roxy shot in JPEG. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Didn't check her camera before she starts shooting. Okay. Basically, you get one chance to be at the top of the Empire State Building to shoot a sunrise photo, and yo girl shot it in all JPEG. I actually got a really cool shot of the of the sunrise. I'm gonna saturate the colors a little bit more, play with my shadows and highlight some to kind of uh, maximize those values. What I like to do sometimes is punch in on the details. You fill the entire frame with buildings. This looks really helicopter-like. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, I personally love those shots. They're, I think they're a little bit less cliche. That's what's different to landscape versus people. You can't stretch someone, yeah. but the landscape stuff is that yeah. you can do a lot of manipulation. I think shooting in raw is a, is a big piece of that, being able to change the image as much as possible. How are you doing? Did you, did you manage to locate your raw files? I didn't. I checked the original um, folder and they're all JPEG. You're all JPEG? Mm -hmm. You shot all in JPEG? I realized now that I did, did do that. Ouch. Yeah. I didn't even have to do much, and I don't think I would have done much, even with a raw file. I'm gonna make it work. The light naturally colored everything the way I would have wanted. Um, that's not the problem. The problem was like, after working as a professional photographer, you know, 
that's one of the first things you do is check your camera, make sure your card's formatted, make sure you're on the right settings, and then you're good to go. 10 minutes left, guys. We're all essentially shooting the same thing. We're just kind of framing it differently. And I decide in between it, whether I go with the vertical or the horizontal. One side of New York versus the other. But it doesn't change the image, it just changes what you what can, I can do, do with it. OK, you have two minutes left. OK. OK, so Thank do your you. final, final tweaks. Thank you. At least Scott should have taken a better picture than me. But if I do better than, than both of them, I would actually be very surprised. One minute left. Today was so incredible. I mean, just to get that experience, I'm just really Five, happy to be here. Um, four, and to be a part of this. Three, two, one. Hard drives, please, in the air. All in all, I love my image, and I'm happy with it. It's just, it's not in raw, but it's OK. Photographers, quite a morning we had. Yes, indeed. So you guys had the opportunity to get to the very top of the Empire State Building to capture an epic landscape picture. Now let me introduce you to our dynamic duo of guest judges, the Jauncey brothers, Jeremy and Tom, the founders of Beautiful Destinations. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Jamai, you're up first. You had the opportunity to get up there five minutes before the others when the sun was cresting and you know there were incredible blues in the sky and pinks and yellows and oranges. Initially I was hoping to get a great shot at a Freedom Tower but all the action was kind of happening over here by the water here. The light was, was very majestic and I think that's what I wanted to capture here. You went for a slightly darker tone in the bottom left of the picture. I guess that more to kind of contrast the colors you're seeing in the sky or what was the, what was the thinking there? And I guess it really wasn't a way for me to avoid that uh, and, and capture the light in the rest of the city in the shot as well. Uh, that, that I will argue with you okay. because you were shooting in RAW, were you uh -huh. not? Yes. And you can definitely on the 5D Mark IV have plenty of dynamic range to pull information out of that area. So you in post-processing could have opened up. I think one of the biggest assets of this photo is the sky. The sky is amazing. You know, the pinks are cool. And you know, there are so many romantic stories associated with pink skies at night, pink skies in the morning. I can just see the, the, what people would think and say when they saw this picture. Scott, you're up next. I like it. I do like the photo. I feel like... Um... It's a difficult challenge you guys have been set. I think it does make me feel the kind of layered effect that you were talking through. I feel as though I can see further into the, uh, into the picture and I want to look what's beyond the river. I want to look a little bit deeper. I feel like the colours, though, on this one, it's not the direction that we would have gone with Beautiful Destinations, which is more of the, the blues and the oranges and that sort of thing. I mean, Scott, I think it's an interesting shot. I mean, I think there are elements of this that are risky. The problem I have with it is that, you know, a photograph really shouldn't need a description for people to understand it. You should just look at it and go, wow, straight off the bat. I feel that there's perhaps that element of that wow, which you were going for, which is lost in the technical brilliance that you have. Roxy, you look very nervous. You look particularly nervous right now. I, I love this photo. I have never been to New York. Um, so of course, being at the very top of it all, I didn't know where things were exactly, but it was very clear to me when I looked out and saw this scene that that was New York, even though I didn't, don't know New York personally. And then crouching down, um, I caught the edge of the railing, and to me it just looked like a dream, and it just made sense. It's a definitely a very dreamy picture. I mean, there, there are elements to this which are somewhat almost cliché. I like the explanation. I really do. It makes sense. And I actually felt the same thing when I, when I saw the photo. I noticed just a lot of your colouring was actually the golden sort of sunshine on, on the buildings. Definitely when I said at the very beginning it was all about the epic, I feel like this is that epic New York. So you can see like the clock towers, you can see the roofs, you can see the colours coming in there. You took a very different way of looking at the sunrise. It slightly kisses the top of the World Trade Centre. Um, I really like those little details there. And then the cloud as well. I, I initially, I was like, did I miss the fog this morning? So like there was an element to that which I really felt that I connected with it. There is also a slight issue with your yes. picture. I did not check my camera before I began shooting, and I ended up shooting my full set in JPEG. Bad, bad photographer. One of the issues here is because you didn't shoot it in RAW, that sky of yours is very, very hard to manipulate. Yeah. I also like the picture. 
But I do wonder whether it's too cliche. I look at a shot like this and say, listen, I, I get it, it's beautiful. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a postcard you can get actually at the Empire State Building. They have shots kind of somewhat similar. Maybe not with the fog at the bottom. Okay, photographers, we are now going to deliberate. We're gonna decide which picture we believe is the best and who will be eliminated. This is gonna be a day, guys. Shoot JPEG, no problems. <laughs> Let's talk about Jemiah's picture first. As I've thought through it more and more so, I, I really like the way he's captured the colors. I think it's my favorite picture. I actually think the absolute opposite. This is my, my least favorite picture. I feel like it doesn't represent the epic of New York. If the Chrysler building wasn't initially noticeable at the beginning, um, you might think it was Chicago, you might think it was somewhere else. If you think of New York City, it is larger than life. I see this picture and I just don't feel the majesty. Yeah. By the way, there is an entire VIP wall of people who have visited the Empire State Building, and there is not one VIP who's taken a picture at sunrise. Mm -hmm. So Jemiah was yeah. the VIP that got the opportunity to do so. In my opinion, missed he missed it. Absolutely. The lower left section is kind of dark. I was like, but those buildings are black. What do you, what do you, what do you mean? I you like that it, you could see the lights on the cars and the lights in the buildings, because I didn't get any of that by the time I got out there. It was too bright. So what do you think about Scott's picture? Tom. I still feel like the colors on this one are off. The pastel tones, that doesn't do it for me. It doesn't do it for beautiful destinations, I feel. There, there isn't enough of the power in this picture. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, really, the way he's washed it with the pink, I think he lost some of his story yeah. in washing it out. He literally yeah. washed out the story. You got three yeah. perspectives on the same general area, New yeah. York, that's well, been photographed to death. Yeah. To Roxy's picture with a little, you know, fog of New York yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very sweet, it's very cute. Leveraging the glass and the reflections in the buildings to tell that sunrise story, I think was a bit more outside of the box. Yeah. And also, she messed up the settings, but actually managed to get herself Back. I had a rail that <laughs> shot in mine. I had it. I didn't want to use it because he would have been like, the rail distracts me. <laughs> like, what? That's Roxy's thing. Yeah, like, I had a the pipe. You can't I called in the pipe. Yeah, right? There was See? another pipe. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm losing. We just got to throw up oh, random pipes in order it's to over. Use. It's over. Okay, I think we have reached a decision. Yeah, it's a tough one. Photographers, we have deliberated over your pictures, and I gotta say, it's getting more and more difficult for us to make a decision. And this particular judging, it was not clear. But there's no doubt that when a picture is truly epic, it resonates with pretty much everybody. And a shot at the top of the Empire State Building, one of the most iconic buildings in New York City, not just from the observation deck, but from the very top, at that moment, at that hour, everything about that moment was epic. One of you has won this challenge. Not an easy decision. Not a clear decision. Congratulations, Roxy. I did it! Thank you. I just keep proving to myself, which is I think the most important, that like, look what you did, you know? You know, there are issues for me with the fact that you shot it in a JPEG. It's a big problem in the grand scheme of things. But as far as an image goes, it was something different that, you know, was uniquely you. And I think that spoke to all the judges in the end. Scott and Jemaya, would you stand forward? I think with your picture, Jemaya, I, I, I really did notice the bottom left of the picture being that much darker. And when you explained that you wanted to, to call out the building, I think we all felt that perhaps you could have done, done more to show the building. And Scott, I picture it a little bit flat. It's a very difficult decision. This is also a very pivotal moment in the competition. Because after this evening's elimination, there'll be just two of you left. And one of you will become top photographer. Congratulations, Scott. You saved. I'm sorry, Jamar. Not a problem. Great job. Thank you. You know, I've had a tough slog to get to this point. So I'm battle test. I'm gonna keep shooting, I'm, you know, I'm still gonna keep doing what I'm doing, you know. Congratulations, both of you. Tomorrow is another day, and you have no idea what we have in store for you. 
Enjoy the evening, prepare yourself, because tomorrow you truly have to be epic. I just feel really lucky to be here um, and a part of it and to be a part of this crew. I just don't want to let anyone down. Oh, God. You pulled off a landscape in JPEG <laughs> when we were supposed to shoot in raw. But it was great. Being up there with you guys, I knew that I couldn't just shoot. You know, I had to have something. I had to have a red pipe. <laughs> <laughs> These challenges really put you to the test. You think you know, and then you, you're caught off guard. I don't even know what to expect for tomorrow. It's gonna, be it's gonna be crazy. Crazy. Uh, I just really want to execute tomorrow. Um, it's really important to me. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna channel my inner Andrew Kearns. Just chill. And chill. Yep. That's all we gotta do. Man, I miss those guys. Next time on Top Photographer. You are the two finalists. I've told you how to shoot, where to shoot, how long you can shoot for, but now all that's about to change. Our finalists have to show what they can do when all the restrictions are lifted. We get to actually go into New York, shoot wherever we want. My heartbeat, like a pounding on the walls. Do your best work. <laughs> like, so pumped. To win $50,000 in prizes. Three, two, one. On Top Photographer. Of you. Let me take this real quick. Perfect. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened. I'm so at peace. Like, no matter what happens, I'm so good. <laughs>